All right, I'm going to get started. Um, yeah, so exam next week, Wednesday, uh, exam review this Sunday. Just a reminder, most of you have probably heard this, but just in case. Um, additionally, yeah, so this week we actually don't have a lot of material, so you should have some time to study basically this week. And the uh, exam material ends this Friday. So basically the bulk of what you should know this week will actually be covered today. Uh, what we covered last time was more of a, well, it's in the book, but basically it was just kind of to show you how the principles you learn in the first three weeks can be applied to solve a larger circuit. That was basically the only purpose of that. But really you're responsible for just knowing single stage amplifier circuits and knowing how to solve these uh, MOS, or sorry, these uh, operational amplifier circuits. And so in particular to solve the operational amplifier circuits, there's really just two sets of equations and then those are written here on the right. So Vn plus has to be equal to Vn minus. So the no matter what, the voltage here and the voltage here will be equal. And then the second governing equation that you're going to use to solve these circuits is that the current coming in to the positive terminal is equal to the current coming in to the uh, negative terminal, and that is zero. So with these two equations, we're actually today going to solve a number of MOS circuits, and they're going to include what's called feedback. So by feedback, what we really mean is that we... Uh, connect a resistor from the output to one of the inputs, either the negative input or the positive input. Input. Usually when it's connected to the negative input and it's just a resistor network, it's called a uh, inverting amplifier. And when it's just a resistor network and it's connected to the positive input, it's called a non-inverting amplifier. So just very briefly, just to review kind of how you do go about this. Typically, all of these circuits uh, essentially break down uh, once you apply these two conditions. So uh, a good strategy to solve these circuits is before even applying KVL, before going into KCL and things you already know, is just to look at these two conditions and see what they imply to, for the circuit. So for example, when we look at this circuit here, uh, what is the voltage on this particular node? Yeah, so basically because Vn plus, so the, the current coming into the positive terminal has to be equal to the positive the terminal, the voltage coming into the negative terminal. And because the positive one is Vn, that means that this voltage here will actually be Vn. Additionally, uh, we also know that how much current flows into here and here based on these equations. Yeah, so no current flows into the circuit. So at this point we haven't, used any of our circuit solving techniques and we already know a lot about the circuit so we know that this branch effectively has i equals zero so it's open circuited and we know that the voltage at this node has to be v in so just from that at this point uh, now we actually have since we've already applied these two conditions now we actually have to go into the circuit and actually solve it and to do that, uh, a simple way is just to do nodal equation, a nodal equation here. And what that tells us is that all of the currents coming out of the node have to sum up to zero. And in this case, kind of the current going out of this node is uh, V in over R in. And the current coming out of this node would be V in minus V out over RF. And all of that has to be equal to zero. Note that this triangle, that's not uh, really means ground. That's a notation from the book. So that's why it's just Vn. This should really be Vn minus zero. Okay, so is everyone kind of getting this so far? Yeah, cool, yeah. 
So when you say that time zero, it's almost like a time that's going like into the room or just like in total in the whole office. The current coming into here is zero. The current coming out of here is zero. And uh, the current coming out of here is actually somewhat that undefined. All right. So basically, you can't really write a nodal equation here because the current here is the, the current I out adapts to allow you to amplify. And so when you write an equation here, you basically say, get that I out equals V out minus V in over RF. Uh, and so you, you inherit an unknown and, uh, and you don't really like, uh, there's no other equations for I out. So it's really a, an equation that's useless to you unless you want to know what I out is in some sense. It's just going to add an extra equation and an extra variable. So it's not going to get anything for you. So yeah, so, so okay, that's another strategy. You usually want to kind of not apply KCL or into the output node just because it's, you know, you need number of equal number of equations and unknowns, but when you add that equation, you add an equation and an unknown. So you're just basically not doing anything. So it's, a, it's kind of a waste of time to some extent, unless they're asking you for IOs explicitly then you have to use get that equation. Okay, so at this point, you just have to do some algebra. So you move V out to the other side and then you get that V out over RF equals one over R in plus one over RF V in. And then to get the gain, you just say that uh, A is equal to V out over V in, which equals one plus RF over RN. So this is a circuit we covered in the last lecture, and this is more of a review. So that's how you would solve these particular circuits. And in the next slide, basically I repeat this. So this is what's called the differential differentiating amplifier. And I, I guess I have a question for all of you. Did you go over current voltage relationships for capacitors last semester? Okay, so you all know that the current across the capacitor is equal to C, the capacitance, didn't they could D, B, T. Uh, you had a question? Or oh, you're just stretching, okay, cool. All right, so at this point to solve for this differential, differentiating amplifier, uh, the first thing you do before you even go into these IV relationships is just uh, use your knowledge of operational amplifiers so you know that this is grounded. So what does that tell us about the negative non-inverting terminal? Yeah, so the non-inverting terminal will be zero because uh, these two voltages are always the same. So now we know the voltage here. Additionally, what is the current coming into this non-inverting terminal? Zero. So that means that this nodal equation will only have two terms, a current coming this way and a current coming that way because the third current is just zero. So at this point, basically, now you just write out the uh, nodal equation. And uh, so from 2K1, you know that I the capacitance current is actually C in dVdt. And so we're going to have basically uh, da, 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 C in times the derivative of zero minus V in, because it's the voltage from uh, this node to this node plus, oh, uh, yeah. Okay, plus, uh, okay. oh yeah, V out minus V in divided by RF has to be equal to zero. And so in this particular case, we can just uh, move all the V out terms to one side so then we're back to kind of the same kind of analysis where we're gonna get basically uh, C in D, D, T of V in 
negative minus V in over RF equals negative V out over RF. So all I did was just move the V out terms to the other side. And now I can actually multiply by ne a negative and multiply by negative one over RF. Where, oh, go ahead. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then this will disappear, actually. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah, so this is zero minus V out because I'm simply looking at the voltage from here to here. And the voltage here is zero, and this is V out. So that's correct. So at this point, all I have to really do is, uh, and then this becomes positive, is uh, multiply by RF both sides. And so now I get that V out equals V. RF CN DDT of VN. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. So now we have V out in terms of VN. And then if we actually want to solve this equation, we have to use what's called the fundamental theorem of calculus, which says that the antiderivative of the Derivative is actually the function itself, or saying that the integral is the inverse of the derivative. So what that tells us is that uh, we can integrate. Oh, actually, actually, no. At this point, we don't have to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. This is the answer. So what this basically tells you is that if I have a uh, v n that's equal to x squared, so if this is v n, then that means that or v squared or something, I don't know, some squared function, uh, shoot, not x squared. A v in of t, so a function of time that's t squared, then v out will actually just be equal to rf c in times 2t, because the, you just have to take the derivative of v in. So I'm doing this because actually this is uh, something that used to be used. This, this is, this, these were like our old school calculators. At some point, people would build these circuits and then they would use them to differentiate functions because you just input the, and then you get. The... <laughs> so yeah, so that's kind of a, they're called analog computers. And so there's like integrators and all these other, and you can form all kinds of functions using these kinds of things. I mean, it's, it's not very uh, good, but yeah, it's just, his, it's a, it's a historic, uh, uh, what do you call this? Yeah, something that people used to do, which is kind of weird, but anyway, so yeah, so that's the solution to this. So, oh, uh, oh, I shouldn't have given you the answer up front, but let's just do this one, just kind of go through the same logic. So just as before, you uh, will start by basically kind of going through the motions of what you know. And in this particular case, you know that the voltage here is the voltage here, but you also know that the current coming in is equal to zero. And so here, what you see is actually a voltage divider because the whatever current comes into here has to go through here because no current flows into the positive terminal. And so really this VS2, you can use to figure out what the voltage here is. And can anyone tell me what the voltage in there is? Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. So basically it's just VS2 divided by R plus R which is actually the current flowing through the circuit times R, that gives you what the voltage here will be, but then the R's will cancel. And so you just get VS two over two. So that's kind of what this equation is. Okay, so now you know VS two, that means that you also know what this, sorry, you know what this uh, voltage here is. It's just VS two. And uh, now you just do another nodal equation. So you have, Oh, sorry, this is VS2 over two. So to figure out the currents coming out, you just have VS2 minus VS1 over R. So the voltage here minus the voltage here over R. 
the voltage here minus the voltage here over R equals zero. And then you can rearrange things and you get that the output is actually the difference of the two voltages. Yes? Usually the output in terms of VN or the ratio of the output to the input. That's kind of what you're interested in. But in a in an exam setting, right? We would tell you what is IF. Uh, I mean, once you know what V out is, then you can find IF because you just do the voltage drop and uh, and and usually your assumption is that you either know the imp you, you're gonna here we're doing it in equation form. When you're doing things in equation form, usually you're gonna assume that the dependent variables are your inputs. So you would always solve in terms of VS1 and VS2 because that's what's actually been input into the circuit. And what's being outputted is actually the equation that you wanna write in terms of those two things. But in if you're given actual numerical values, then it's kind of implied by the numerical values, which should be the ones on the left, on the right-hand side of the equation. Go ahead. Um, oh, the, so if you look at this circuit here, right? The there's really one. If a current coming in here, there's only one place it can go is here because remember, no current flows out. Mm -hmm. And so the current I capital I going through here is actually just equal to. Vs2 over R plus R because that's the voltage from here to ground. So it's just dropping through the two resistors. So it's just a voltage divider basically. So see here how it's uh here it's Vs2 and here it's zero. And then between the two, there's two R, R plus R. And so that the current is just uh, the voltage divided by the resistance. So that's where you get this term but you're actually interested in the voltage drop from here to here. So you multiply by R to get what the voltage is. And then you get once the two R's, the R's cancel. And so you get VS2 over two, or basically because these two resistances are the same, half the voltage drops across each resistor. Go ahead. Oh, I didn't drop it. So here there is over two and here there's over two. So two times over two is just one time. Okay, cool. So no other questions? Yeah. So in that loop that you just did, you did VS over two or the voltage loop. Is there, is there a non-zero current there or is, there, or is it still the current here? There's no current coming into this into this node. That's the only thing you know, but that just turns this into whatever comes in here has to come out of here. Okay, I mean, okay. Yeah. But, so there could be like current in like the other part of the circuit. It just can't be going into the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine, yeah. imagine a room, okay, and there's two doors, okay, and so this current is coming through here. So the so you can see the two the the two openings. There's two openings, and the current coming into here can see. But it just it turns out that one of the opening has like a wall or barrier. And so really there's only one opening because you can't, although you can't see that the, you, you think that you can go through that opening, you really can't. And so all of the current must flow down through here because there's that wall. And so there's just nowhere else to go. And so even though it looks like here, there's actually like a junction of three things, there's really a junction of two things. Just, just, just imagine like you're coming into this thing, and then, so then you just kind of like turn and. All right, that's that's really actually all this like KCL is saying. You know, if if you come in through one door, you're gonna come out of the other door, and if two people come in through one door, they're gonna come out, and depending on which door they choose, well, they have to choose a door. <laughs> if they like, uh, the that's all it's saying. What comes in has to come out, like. There's no magic to this or, all right. And in this case, nothing can come out of this door because there's a glass barrier. All right, next thing.
Okay. Uh, is that more or less clear? That's why it's good to always just kind of like a start with the basic op amp operation because then you won't forget that there's that glass door so if you write i equals zero through this branch you won't mistakenly try to include it in your equations and it's going to avoid you making errors so that's why i always i i uh i recommend you start just with the op amp and the properties of the op amp and then move on to the kcl kvl go ahead yeah, exactly. So this is kind of a gotcha problem because uh, as there's no current flowing here, I equals zero. And so that means that there's no voltage drop across here. So if I put a one mega ohm resistor here or a 10 mega ohm, anything, the, cur the voltage will be the same because no current ever flows in. Yeah. But you would automatically know that if you just say, okay, what is the voltage here? Okay, V plus... And this also has to be V plus. What is the current coming into here? Oh, zero. What is the current here? Zero. And then you're like, oh, wait, no current can flow through here. Oh, this must be ground. Therefore, this must be ground. And now you're ready to solve the circuit. Does that make sense for everyone? Or So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm supposed to spend three classes on this. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so actually th this is a previous example <laughs> so that's the kind of curveball <laughs> there's the answer to your question <laughs> i think this isn't one of your previous <laughs> okay so now let's solve this uh <laughs> let's solve the circuit uh, so, okay, so here we know that this is grounded. We know that this is grounded. So now we just basically go to our magic node where the feedback is connected and we just write the KCL equation. So we know that the current across the capacitor is just CDVDT. So here we have two microfarads times VDT. And if I can do this math right, it's zero minus VN, zero minus VN. And then... Um, here we have zero minus V out, so plus zero minus V out over 500 K. That has to all sum up to zero. So that's your KVL equation. And in this case, they give us V out. So we kind of have to be careful a little bit, but let's just uh, go through the motions. So, so basically we have to put V in as the thing that we isolate. Um, so we're going to have basically that V out over 500K equals uh, two microfarad D, D, T of V in, and then we need a negative number, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Uh, yes. No, so, so this one moved to the other side, so this one stays negative. Oh yeah, or they yeah, it doesn't matter. I guess both ways would work. Okay. Uh at this point, since we know V out, we actually need to uh divide out by two microfarads. And I can't divide, so I'm just gonna look up the answer. Oh, well. So we basically have here uh, da, 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 V out divided by five times 10 to the five times two times 10 to the six, oh, which is just equal to one. Yeah, yeah, so negative. And then now we have D, D, T of V in. So we multiply this out and this is just, so if two times five is just 10. And, oh, if, and this should be 10 to the negative six, sorry. So the powers cancel. And so actually this is just one which is kind of nice. And so now all we have to do is solve this equation. And now we need the fundamental theorem of, of calculus, which basically says uh, that uh, the integral of the derivative of f is actually just equal to f. So that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. And so then we uh, will uh, use that to 
differentiate to basically solve our function. And I'm just going to go to the next slide at this point because the the uh, yeah that that we're at this step right now, and uh, now we want to find v n sub t. So now we integrate both sides of the equation because we know v out. And it's telling us to assume that Vn of zero equals uh, three. And so when we integrate this side, the integral and the derivative cancel. Uh, so we're basically gonna have the integral from zero to tau, Vn of tau, or sorry, from zero to t, the tau equals the integral from zero to T of V out of tau, D tau. And so here on the left-hand side, oh, sorry, D, D, T. This is actually just a V in of T minus V in of zero. And we were given V ins of zero. And now V out, this integral here is just actually three sine tau d tau, which if I know how to integrate, that's just negative cosine of no, zero to t. So that's just negative cosine. So we're going to get three, negative three cosine tau evaluated at zero and t. Is that clear how I got this oh, question? No. Are there questions at this point or? Yeah. That's that's why we had we needed the initial condition because once you put limits in the integral you don't have a, a constant. Um, so since we know that the arbitrary constant is really v ins of zero, but we were given to us what the value is. So as you saw, I integrated both sides from zero to t uh, because I know what v n is at time equals zero, and so on the left hand side I got v ins of t minus v ins of zero, and on the right hand side I got this function evaluated at zero, well, the derivative, the integral of this function evaluated at zero and the integral evaluated at t. And so now you can basically go through the, this is where we were in the last uh, slide. And uh, now you plug in t and zero. And so now you get that uh, v ins of t. So cosine of uh, zero is actually one. So you have negative three, but then you have negative three here because we were given the initial condition. So the negative threes cancel and you're just left with the ends of t equals three cosine t. What? What happened to the negative sign in front of the negative v over dt v n? Uh, I moved it to the other side in this slide. So you see it right here. So it's still negative. So, oh, so the negative here, and I just ended up putting it there when I wrote it uh, in, the, in these particular slides, but it's still there. Is there any other questions or? Cool, so no questions about this. All right, we have 20 more minutes to learn op amps. Actually, we have an hour and 10 more minutes to learn op amps, but yeah. No, Vn at time zero was three volts, and we actually just gave that to you. So we said it's three volts. And that's per that's just to avoid the constant that uh, one of your classmates alluded to. Uh, so you would have to be given an initial condition of some sort to solve this problem. Well, okay, so here I plug in a Vn of t minus three equals three cosine t plus, oh, minus three, sorry. And so the threes just cancel and that's why you're left with that. And then here you just kind of formally need to add a dummy, dummy variable. I should have called this tau here. That's uh, to keep the mathematicians happy because you can't integrate out a variable. Um, All right, uh, yeah, so now let's let's go through another example. 
so I, I guess before I do this, do you show of hands how many think that I should next class do more examples or maybe go into nonlinearity more examples? Okay. Okay, so okay, I'll do more examples. I just find these really boring. I don't know if because it's just like the same thing over and over and over again. And it's just like like it's always gonna be in this mode. It's always gonna be i equals zero. It's like give me one where i doesn't equal zero or like anyway all right so what is the voltage at the negative terminal zero okay so it's zero and then no current ever flows out of here so now we know that this is zero and so now let's do this nodal equation so again so now to find the da well ba equals zero and then kcl at a so now we uh basically have that zero minus V capital in divided by R1 uh, plus zero minus VX divided by R2 equals zero. Um, yeah, so that allows us to solve for VX in terms of VI. So we can say that the, am I wrong here? So we have basically, we move Vx to the other side. And so we have Vx equals negative R2 over R1 Vi. So all I did was move this to the other side and then multiplied by R2 to get this equation. Is that clear or do people want me to explain this further? Cool, so now we have one of the node equations. So this KCL at A tells us that Vx equals negative r2 over r1 vi. Now we got to do KCL at x, so another KCL. So as you're studying, you uh, kind of get the idea of what the important things are. Basically, if you know how to do feminine resistances, you basically know how to do compute R in, R out, omega low, omega high. So I brush up on those skills because it's just every, every almost 80% of the stuff we've done is just seven and resistances. The only other thing that we've done is gain. And now we're doing KCL at nodes and that's basically it. So if you're good at KCL and you know how to compute R seven and resistances, you're in a, you're in very good shape basically. Uh, okay, so now let's do this nodal equation. So we have Vx minus zero, Vx minus zero divided by R2 plus Vx minus zero divided by R3 plus Vx minus V out divided by R4 equals zero. And so now we can actually write this in terms of Vx. So we move the V out to the other side and multiply by R4. So we have one over R2 plus one over R3 plus one over R4 Vx is equal to V out over R4. And then we multiply out by R4. So this R4 kind of gets distributed out. So now we have R4, R4, and this becomes one. And now we can just basically plug in the VI here, or we can plug this in for VX and then we get the total gain. Questions at this point or? Cool. All right, so that's kind of the, so that's equation one that we derived. Then this is the second equate, wait, what? Oh yeah, this is the second equation we derived. Um, I just left the VI here and I left the R4 here, but. So now at this point, you just basically, for VX, you plug in this uh, times VI and then yeah, that's how you end up with this equation here. 
Yeah, so that's another example of operation amplifier. So let's go through one more example. And I actually haven't prepared a solution for this. So we're going to go through uncharted territories. So just uh, how much current flows into this terminal? Zero. OK. Here. OK, cool. So can anyone tell me how you can determine the voltage VA or BB? Like what's the strategy at this point? Since you know that I equals zero, I equals zero. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, exactly. So at this point, you since no current flows through here, there's that glass, whatever door or whatever. That means that all the current has to flow through that little branch and that third branch does nothing for you. And so you can just do a voltage division here. And uh, it's a bit more complicated because as you can see here, the negative terminal of VF is here. So, and the positive terminal of VF is here. But you know that uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I should have. So you basically have here that VA over R2 plus VA minus VF over R1 has to be equal to zero. Yeah. At this point, you don't really know what VA is, so you still have two unknowns, so you can't quite get a value. Uh, go ahead. Why would you do that instead of voltage division? Uh, uh, it's it's because we don't really know what this voltage is, okay. uh, because it's connected through there. But either way, what is BA in what is BB in terms of BA at this point? Huh? It's equal. Yeah, exactly. So at that point, you can actually say that this is BA. So you don't really have to solve for it yet. Uh, okay. So now we can do KCL at this node, and we're going to get another equation, and we can just write everything in terms of VA. So now we have VA minus VF divided by R1 plus VA minus V out divided by R2, which equals uh, zero. So in this particular case, you can basically now uh, get rid of the VF because, uh, da, 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 so you can get rid of it. So the main thing here is that we, uh, we wanna get rid of VF, not VA, but getting rid of VA, VF is really easy. So yeah, we gotta get rid of VA at this point. Um, and so you basically have to solve this equation for VA, plug it into here, uh, sorry, plug in into here and here, and then solve for V out in terms of VA, VF, sorry. So you got to get rid of VA basically. And so you got to write VA in terms of VF and then you're done. Go ahead. You, well, at this point, we don't actually only care about, we want an equation in terms of VF and V out. Uh, but we have two, and in this case, we can actually do that. So in this case, we can solve for, in this case, at this point, you're in algebra because you have two equations and you have three unknowns. So we just solve for VF in this equation. So now we're going to get basically that VF equals 
uh, negative one over R2 plus one over R1 uh, VA. And uh, right, so I just moved it to the other side and now I have to multiply by R1. So this is over R1, sorry. And so now here, oh, did I do this backwards? Yes, I did this backwards, sorry. We wanna write BA in terms of VF, sorry. Uh, so we're gonna have one over R1 plus one over R2 VA equals VF over R1. And there should be a negative sign or no? Yeah, so then what we're gonna get actually is that this implies that VF equals R1 in parallel to R2 divided by R1 VF. Sorry, VA, VA, VF, yeah. And now once we have this, now we can just plug this in here to get rid of VA, plug this in here to get rid of VA. And then that's gonna give us an equation for V out and V in. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so in this case, VF is your input and V out is your output. Yeah, and VA is really an intermediate intermediate variable that you need to get rid of. But once you have two equations, you can get rid of one variable, and the one you want to get rid of is VA. Uh, but at this point, it's just basically doing some algebra. Uh, but cautionary tale, you saw how much I fumbled doing this algebra once I hadn't previously solved it. It's because uh, when I do my research, I use these uh, online calculators that all of you use. And uh, luckily, I don't have to take any exams, so I can get away with it. But you do, so it's it's a bad idea to use these calculators, at least while you're in school. <laughs> Just a cautionary tale. You, you, you saw me fumbling. I'm like trying to solve. I mean, I didn't, I eventually got to it, but this is not the, this is time wasted in an exam that you don't really need. Go ahead. In the first PCL equation, um, why is there a VF? Because VF is a floating basic source, so it's not grounded. Yeah, so VF really stands for the drop between here and here. It's not really a, uh, so the voltage difference between this terminal and this terminal is your input. Do you see what I mean or? So VF is not, uh, it's really just a, the drop between one node to the other node. Like uh, it's not really like, it's a relative. So to be more explicit, we should actually call a lot of these, this VFs, whenever we have a source, we should actually call it Delta VF but we don't actually do that, but it's implied that it's a voltage difference. Uh, and so it doesn't really matter what the actual value is here because we're, we're actually interested is in the voltage drop across those two terminals. So really it's, let's call this VF minus and let's call this VF plus. So what we really care, what this VF really means is VF plus minus VF minus. So the difference between these two nodes is really your input. Okay, I'm not gonna solve this because I just don't wanna embarrass myself like that, but all you have to do at this point is just plug this in here, do a little bit of algebra to isolate the VO, and then you get your answer. Um, and also we only, well, we have five minutes. So I think, are there any more questions? Next class, we'll go through this one um, and then we'll maybe go through this one and then I'll talk about uh, non-ideality. Uh, that's actually a quite a short part, but go ahead. We expect the test to be either similar or similar to one that could be like classic or in that case. I would say so, yes. Okay. Similar difficulty. 
uh, not similar, not similar questions. I haven't actually seen the test at this point, and I'm not writing the test. So, but really, like one question per lecture. Typically, there's going to be a DC circuit or two. And uh, there's not that many of those we solved in class. We're not going to throw curveballs, basically. The All of these examples are fair game. The ones I went through in class. Uh, typically, students don't struggle with this. They struggle with the MOS hot stuff. Uh, go ahead. Any other questions? I will, I will send a review today, by the end of the day today. So I, I usually send the review packet. It's just that I haven't had time to update it, but I will send it out today. And what? Okay. So it's a game is the other or the for the open you have two VM. So which one should I So the, the 